Yeah, we had uh, some of the most astonishing miracles I've ever seen. Blind eyes open, paralyzed limbs unloosed. And uh, we went there every month. And, you know, you're mentioning Pasadena. That's where Catherine first went before oh, she went Catherine to the shrine. Yes, yeah, wow. she went to Pasadena. Wow. Also, one of the greatest healing evangelists of the 20th century, who did a stint, by the way, as the assistant pastor to Amy McPherson, was oh. Charles S. Price. Oh. And his, his headquarters were in Pasadena. He probably influenced me more in healing his writings than uh, anyone. In fact, if you look at the back of I Believe in Miracles, written by Catherine Kuhlman, um, the, it's almost word for word taken from Dr. Price's description of faith. Wow. So miracles began to happen in Pasadena when we went there. We had a 3,000 seat hall. And I'll never forget one, one year, his name was Daniel Ramirez. He was the uh, Santa Claus in Gardena Mall in, the, in Gardena, California, not far from the LA airport. His wife brought him to the meeting and didn't tell him it was a Christian meeting. And he had been born blind, think of that. And uh, even in the Bible, it said no one had ever heard of someone born blind getting their sight. Well, he's sitting there and he's getting an antagonistic because he finally realized from what he's hearing that he's in a Christian service. <laughs> and then sovereignly, his sight is restored. And he looks down, he can see, he sees his wife for the first time. He, he is out of his mind. He begins to disrupt the meeting and, and people don't understand until finally he comes out on the stage. He hands me his Braille ID his cane, and he looks me in the eye. And I ask him, and I notice you're, you're wearing a blue shirt. And I said to him, what, I had a blue shirt on. And I said, what color is my shirt? And he said, he laughed. He said, I've never seen color before. I don't know what color that is. And, and so the children that December, because he was healed in uh, October, they got to see a Santa Claus again with his sight. And it was, it shook Los Angeles. It, it was amazing. I'm there, and, and, you know, we had so many healings like that. Uh, I'd like to just talk about one other that was a, he was a county, uh, he was a deputy sheriff of Orange County Sheriff. And one day he was in his patrol car and he had a, a suspect in the back and he was writing up an arrest report when his car was struck and the, it knocked his head in all four corners of that car. The man in the back was thrown out the window and he, he recovered from his physical maladies, but he lost his mind and he had to be institutionalized. His wife never left him. She was a believer. She sat there and just year after year, just believed for her husband to be healed. And so one day the doctor said, he's dying. And she said, well, if he's dying, let him come home. Let him live in his house for his last few. And they said, he could, he is violent. He could, he could hurt you. So he comes home, he's sitting there and he tells his wife, um, I kept my service revolver. They don't know that I have it. And he said, it's under my pillow. I'm going to sleep in a different room than you. And if you hear a gunshot in the middle of the night, you'll know that I killed myself because I can't live this way. She even recounted one day asking him what he wanted for dinner. And he tore the, the door off the hinges just because of violent anger. So he took to watching the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jan Crouch, and he would watch it. And one night, Paul and Jan had me on and we shared the miracle of uh, Daniel Ramirez. And they said, um, when's your next meeting? Well, I said, it's in Pasadena on a certain night. And this man turns to his wife and says, I'm supposed to be in that meeting. So he comes to the meeting. He's sitting there over on my left side with 3,000 people. And I begin to call out a miracle to my right. So he jumps up. His name was John. John jumps up runs across to get under what he thinks is the flow over here. 
So then I go up in the point up in the balcony. So he runs up in the balcony. So he's chasing the anointing all over the room, he thinks. And he'll finally he sits down and looks at his wife and he said, you know what? Jesus is just going to have to find me. That's all. I'm going to sit here. Approximately 845 on a Saturday night, he felt a breeze go through his head. And he looks at his wife. I, tell you, I can feel that I feel too. No, I cannot. Whew. And he says, I'm normal. Hmm. So he comes on the stage and he starts telling his story. And he said, you know, I'm going to go to my doctor tomorrow on Monday. It was Saturday. He said, I'm going to go to my doctor on Monday and I'm going to tell him. So he has to take so many antidepressants and whatever medication they prescribe, anti-seizure medication, everything else. And they told him, okay, on Monday, um, I'll see you. And he said, Doc, what if I told you I haven't had one pill in 72 hours? Not one. <laughs> and he said, uh, he, he said, let me call security because <laughs> this, is, this is not good. This is really bad. He said, well, Doc, I haven't had a seizure, haven't had any uh, insane thoughts. I'm totally normal. And I was healed by the power of God. A month later, he's at our next rally and he's got a a, a lawn bag filled with capsules. And he said, this is what I would have taken by now if I was still not healed. And, he, and while he's talking, the audience is staring at him. I'm looking at his wife because there's the story. Oh, oh. You know, she stood and believed and never left him. It was amazing. Uh, those things change your life forever. No wonder we believe they're deep wells in Pasadena because they're all. Amen. Mm. Amen. I have so felt the presence of God. Do you remember, was it, was it New Zealand or I think it was in New Zealand where we were, where we were in a hall where one of the great. Smith Wigglesworth. Yes. Yeah, Smith yeah. Wigglesworth had been in that hall. Mario, when we walked into that hall, there was a residue of the anointing from mm. when Smith Wigglesworth was there. And we saw, because we drew on that, we saw all kinds of things, uh, uh, manifestations of God. And just as I, I mentioned to you and Che when we were in California, I think that there are times when, when God wants you to go back to the wells. And in Pasadena, there is that, that place that is a well. And Che said, I believe we're supposed to go there at some point. I can't wait for that to happen because mm -hmm. I want to be there. And I'll know I know a lot of the a lot of people who are watching this going, wow, if that kind of stuff is going to happen there, I want to be there, too, because I love what you said, that, that God said, I'm going to make you a target of my glory. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those that are watching, mm -hmm. and I know that as as we're as we're hearing these testimonies from Mario, you're sensing that you're feeling something and know this, that God's. God's doing, he's up to something, Cindy. He's really up to something. And even the old, even the old wells, and even sometimes even the old techniques, because Mario was doing tent meetings, right? And you had, you'd been talking about tents. There's yes. a brother in this area. He's doing tents. Who would think that God would re come full circle again and have us do tent meetings? And I believe that if we do them and we give the testimonies of them, God's going to be motivated to do it again, Mario. Yeah, I yeah. have felt so the presence yep. of the Lord. I just think this is the time for you to pray for people. Mm. Just let the Holy Spirit just speak through you. I mean, I feel such a healing anointing mm -hmm. right now. The, the people have faith and just pray. You know, one of the things I want to do to set up this prayer, and I do it real quickly, is the devil's work always backfires. God <laughs> guarantees it. It always backfires. And it backfires to the same degree that of what he does. If he comes at you with great force, God is going to raise up a standard against him and, and overcome him. You know, I believe that we're in an hour where God is healing the sick. And this technology of Zoom call uh, that we're using today, I mean, think about this. The pandemic was supposed to silence the church. 
Mm -hmm. but it gave the church a black belt in online <laughs> ministry, something that I think the devil severely re regrets at this point. And Paul thought, I'm in prison. I can't do anything but write. <laughs> and how the devil regrets the New Testament. And Lord, I just thank you that what people think was an attack that set them back is actually a slingshot to drive them into the future with greater force than they imagined. And for that, Lord, we pray for healing. and We give you the glory. We don't take it for ourselves. We ask you, Lord, to bring healing power on every single person that is watching, that husband and wife, the husband with cancer, a woman with lupus, another that has severe crippling arthritis so bad that you never are free of pain. And yet Jesus is there beside you to make you whole. I feel so much, Lord, from your spirit. A river is flowing of healing. And God, I ask for healing in the body, number one. Number two, encouragement in the spirit. For God to fan to flame some of the words that have been tested by the devil. Fan to flame the original fire and the original clarity of what you have spoken and the promises that are going to be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, for a mighty work. Let us hear astonishing reports of what's going out to the world through this broadcast right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.